Hi everyone and welcome to the catalytic processes section of the Advanced Chemical Engineering Unit. I believe I haven't met some of you yet, so I would like to introduce myself first. I obtained my PhD in Chemical Engineering from University College London in 2012. Between 2012 and 2016, I worked as a research associate at Imperial College London, where I was part of many exciting projects on low carbon energy and sustainable supply chains. Between 2014 and 2016, I worked as an expert consultant for the Energy Technologies Institute here in the UK, who commissioned me to build an optimization model for biomass value chains for the UK to determine what crops we can sustainably grow for bioenergy and biofuels, where best to grow them and how best to design and operate the logistical network to get the lowest cost and lowest greenhouse gas emissions. Scion Crown Research Institute also hired me to build a similar value chain model, but this time focusing on forestry. So the problem was how to design a sustainable value chain in New Zealand using their forest resources to produce biofuels, making sure that their forests are sustainably managed and there is no negative impacts on biodiversity and ecosystem services. And in 2016, I joined the University of Bath first as a prize fellow and then as a lecturer where I have established my research group of PhD students and postdocs researching on sustainable value chain of various resources. The models we are developing in my research group have been applied to find sustainable solutions for many countries such as the UK, Europe, Southeast Asia, and Latin America. I have traveled a lot and I have been working with many academics and researchers worldwide. Why do we need to study catalytic processes? Without catalysts and catalytic processes, the majority of chemicals and products that make our modern life possible and convenient could not be produced, at least not sufficiently fast to be of use and not at a scale required to meet demands. Catalysis is so important that more than 80% of all manufactured materials for example, mobile phones, clothes, solar panels, food and drinks, require catalysts at some point in their value chain. The catalyst market is very big, around 15 billion euros every year. And the products delivered by catalysts amount to 20 trillion euros, or 40% of the global GDP. In the UK economy, the catalyst sector contributes 21% to the GDP and 15% of all exports. And more importantly, the market is growing by 5% every year, which means business opportunities and jobs for chemical engineers like us. Key players include Johnson Mathy, Zeolist, Criterion, Halder Topso, and UOP. Have you heard of any of these companies before? Probably some of you had a placement in one or some of them. Catalytic processes are also important to prevent pollution. Probably the most familiar example is the catalytic converter in cars, which converts toxic compounds from incomplete combustion such as carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and nitrous oxides, into less harmful compounds such as water, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen, so that we can breathe a bit less polluted air in cities. As you will learn in the module, catalytic processes are also important 
to make alternative fuels and chemicals. In summary, catalysis is crucial for chemical industry, for generating wealth and jobs and for sustainability of our society. Catalysis is one of the tools that chemical engineers can use to help save the world. In this unit, you will learn how to analyze reactions, taking account of mass and heat transfer effects, and how catalysts can lose their activity in a process we call deactivation. You will understand how catalytic processes work, and this will enable you to analyze and design catalytic reactors. How does this unit relate to other modules? We will be using the concepts you learned in your modules on homogeneous reaction engineering, engineering chemistry, advanced mathematical modeling, separation processes, and transport phenomena. It would be a good idea to look at your previous notes for these topics. For recommended reading, the textbooks by Fagler are the most popular ones, as you should know from your homogeneous reaction engineering module. Both of these are available from our library, both print and online if you like reading from your computer. Supplementary learning materials for these books are available from these links. The books by Levenspiel and Misen are also useful references, and so are the books of Ramachandran and Carberry although these books are a bit old. Okay, this is very important. You're final year students and this is an advanced chemical engineering unit with an underline on the word advanced. We are dealing with complex systems, so obviously you cannot expect this unit to be a walk in the park. One of the challenges in this unit is the mathematical nature of the topics. This is not my fault, so please don't let your maths hold you back from doing well in this module. So to help you, I prepared a maths topic revision sheet to help you remember the maths that you've learned before. There is nothing new in this list. You already learned everything in this list, but some of you may be a little rusty, so it's worth brushing up so that we can spend the precious time in our sessions learning about advanced reaction engineering. So please brush up on how to manipulate algebraic expressions. Okay, so general analysis of functions without plotting a function and simply by simply looking at it, you should be able to tell its behavior. Is it increasing or decreasing? Is there a turning point? Maximum, minimum? How does it behave as x tends to zero or as x tends to infinity? Can you simplify it by throwing away some terms that are insignificant? Is it linear or nonlinear? So please also revise derivatives, chain rule and product rules of differentiation how derivatives transform under variable transformation. I also expect you to know your differential equations. Can you still solve a first order differential equation? We are only going to consider the variable separable case. How do you determine and apply the correct boundary conditions? Boundary conditions are very important. Sometimes researchers or companies will publish their models in the form of differential equations, but will not give away the boundary conditions. Sometimes it is much easier to derive the differential equations, but it could be very difficult to determine the correct boundary conditions to solve the equations. Do you still remember how to solve second order differential equations? What about how to integrate a function and how to integrate by parts? Please also revise your hyperbolic functions. We will need them later on in modeling the effectiveness of catalysts. 
what are Kosh AX and Singe or Shine AX, what are their derivatives and integrals. Finally, please recall your logarithms, specifically how to generate and use your log-log or log-linear plots to determine the relationship between two variables from experimental data. I made a simple revision sheet with the basic information about these topics. You can download the revision sheet from Moodle or by clicking on the link on the slide. Please take a look and make sure you understand. Simali already explained our timetabled sessions with you. For the catalytic process part of the unit, which I will be teaching, we will have 11 live online interactive learning sessions or LOIL sessions every Thursday at 10.15. The link to the MS Teams meetings is on this slide and also on our Moodle page. We also have two for our in-person sessions in weeks two and seven. I will give you more details about this later. Let's not overwhelm ourselves by using too many technologies. Let's keep it simple and only use Moodle, MS Teams, and Padlet. We will use Moodle as the repository for all learning materials, as well as for coursework submission, announcements, and discussion forum. Note that I will not be sharing any files via MS Teams. We will only use MS Teams for the LOIL sessions. If you'd like to post your questions or feedback anonymously, then you can use Padlet. The links for Moodle, MS Teams meetings, and Padlet are on the slide. They are also on Moodle. Simali already talked about assessment. Feedback is very important in both directions. From me to you will be in the form of formative feedback throughout the module, and this will be provided during the lectures, problem classes, and activities during our online sessions. So please make sure that you engage with all of them and be proactive in obtaining all of this feedback because it will definitely help you prepare for the summative assessment. Equally important is your feedback to me. Please feel free to provide feedback after every session using our discussion boards on Moodle or Padlet and during our sessions on MS, MS Teams. There will also be mid-semester and end-of-year questionnaires. Here are my top tips for getting the most out of each of our sessions. Our sessions are going to be a combination of synchronous active learning activities via MS Teams and pre-recorded lectures. I will make the pre-recorded lectures available on Moodle before the live online interactive learning sessions. Download the lecture slides from Moodle so you can annotate them while watching the video. In the video lectures, there are some exercises and you'll learn more if you try the exercises on your own before looking at the solutions. So pause the video when you are told to do so and try the exercises on your own. If you have any questions about the video lecture, then you can ask them at the start of the next LOIL session. You can also post your questions on our Moodle forum or use our Padlet board if you want to comment anonymously. If you have comments or feedback on what went well, and what can be improved, you can also post them to our discussion boards. I really want our sessions to work well and for all of you to get the most out of them. So if there's anything that you'd like me to change or start doing, then let me know. 
Similarly, if something is going well and you would like me to continue or do more, then I would like to hear about that too. We will use the LOIL sessions mostly for active learning activities, so please make sure that you attend them all and prepare beforehand, for example, by watching the pre-recorded lecture and going through the lecture slides so that you can engage fully with the activities.